Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. Uh, in my last lecture, I had uh, described this ellipse that is drawn by a gyro that is damped in tilt. We had started from this point, which is horizontal and in meridian. Uh, the axle had moved uh, slightly outside of the previous ellipse, that is undamped gyro's ellipse. Now, as the axle moves to this point, it acquires equilibrium in east-west direction. That is, the control precision becomes equal to drift. Now, you have seen in the ellipse trace, all the east-west peaks, they are occurring on the major axis of previous ellipse. Now, as far as the north-south peaks are concerned, you know, if I draw a line like this, joining this peak, all the peaks are occurring at this point. Whether you look at this peak, you look at this peak, you look at this peak, all the peaks, they occur on uh, this particular line, which is on the eastern side. We had seen that the axle settles uh, in an equilibrium position where all the four forces, the opposite forces, they are equal. For example, the vertical forces, that is upward tilting and downward damping precision and east-west forces, that is drifting and uh, control precision. Sometimes the students have this query in mind. They say earth spins from west to east. So all the heavenly bodies, they go from east to west and axle is set to follow a star that is a fixed point in the space star is going from east to west why is the axle going eastward why is the drifting eastward in northern hemisphere to answer their query i have a very simple example to uh, share with you if you look at the observer's rational horizon diagram for the northern hemisphere we find that north celestial pole is over here Suppose we are talking about 30 degrees north latitude, this north celestial pole is 30 degrees elevated from the uh, observer's rational horizon. Now, in this diagram, you have to understand that you are looking at uh, a dome from top. So in this diagram, this is the highest point and this is the zero level, that is zero altitude. That means this point is 30 degrees elevated compared to uh, the horizontal. When the axle is placed here, pointing north and horizontal, there is a star which is crossing the lower meridian because this particular part of the meridian is lower meridian and this star which is crossing the lower meridian goes this way. You can see the declination circle. The star is going from west of observer to the east of observer. That's why the drifting is eastward, right? For all the tracings, we must say that in Northern Hemisphere, the drifting will be always eastwards and in Southern Hemisphere, the drifting will be westwards because of in the Southern Hemisphere, if we see, look at the diagram of the Southern Hemisphere, right? This is the South Celestial Pole and this particular thing is Upper Meridian. So if I place the axle this way, it is pointing towards the star which is crossing the upper meridian and crossing of upper meridian is from east to west. So we have seen that in uh, northern hemisphere the drifting is eastward and southern hemisphere the drifting is westward. We will follow that. Now equilibrium for the gyro that is damped in tilt we have tilting here we have damping precision downwards we have drifting over here and we have control precision that is westwards. Now drifting we know the formula is 15.041 sine latitude cos altitude right? and for the tilting the formula was 15.041 cos latitude sine azimuth. Now, I told you earlier that the damping precision is a very small part of the control precision for a particular gyro in Sperry. It is, uh, the ratio is 1 is to 40. That means this is 1 40th of control precision for that gyro. Whatever it is, that ratio, that is damping precision upon control precision is called rho. Rho is damping coefficient and it shows the ratio between the control precision and the damping precision. Now, can I say, looking at this diagram, that damping precision is rho times control precision. So damping precision, which is 
15.041 cos latitude sin azimuth is equal to rho times the control precision and control precision is 15.041 sin latitude cos altitude. Now in my previous discussion I had told you that in the entire trace actually the gyro axle does not leave the horizontal by any uh, big margin. It is more or less close to the horizontal that means cos altitude is more or less equal to cos 0 and cos 0 as you know is 1. So this particular term can be neglected when we equate the two forces of two accelerations. Now 15.041 also from both the sides it gets cancelled so we are left with sin azimuth cos latitude is equal to rho times sin latitude which means that sin azimuth is equal to rho times tan latitude. For small angles in case of sin and tan we generally can say that sin of theta tends to theta which means that say for example sin of 1 degree or 10 of 1 degree we can write as 1 upon 57.3. We have seen that earlier. So in this particular case also I can write this as azimuth in degree upon 57.3 equal to rho tan latitude which means that azimuth in degrees equal to 57.3 rho tan of latitude. This azimuth in degree is the angle by which the axle settles off the meridian. So this is the meridian so this particular distance is called azimuth in degree and this is the damping error. Damping error is associated only with the gyros that are damped in tilt. Right? So uh, any gyro that is damped in tilt in northern hemisphere will settle uh, slightly to the east of meridian and amount of shift to the east is called damping error and it is given by this formula azimuth in degrees is equal to 57.3 rho tan latitude. Now you have seen that this particular error is dependent only on the latitude because we said that altitude is more or less close to zero so cos of altitude is more or less equal to one we could neglect the term and we could generally say that damping error is equal to rho times 57.3 tan latitude this means this error will be there even if the ship is at anchor it does not need any kind of speed it, it does not need any kind of movement of the ship this particular error is not there for the gyros which are damped in azimuth for example, Anschutz, the gyro damped in azimuth, it does not have this error. The Sperry gyros are uh, generally damped in tilt and they will have this error, damping error, 57.3 rho tan latitude. We can do a simple example. Let us say there is a ship on which there is a gyro damped in tilt and the correctors are not applied. So suppose there is a ship in uh, say 48 degrees north latitude, let us find out what is the damping error if the damping coefficient is 1 upon 40? The error is going to be 57.3 into tan 48 degrees equal to divided by 40. So the error is 1.59, 1.59. Which means that if rho is 1 upon 40 and the latitude is equal to 48 degrees, the damping error is 1.59 degrees east. This error will become westerly if the ship goes to southern hemisphere. Damping error depends only on the latitude and the hemisphere. Sometimes a question that is asked is why a gyro that is damped in tilt in northern hemisphere settles slightly to the east and slightly above. The horizontal. The answer for that is as follows. Suppose this is the meridian and this is the horizontal. What we are saying is that the axle is settling at this point which is slightly above the horizontal, slightly to the east. The reason for that is in the northern hemisphere, let's say this is the point at which the settlement is taking place. Now drifting is eastwards because we know that the axle follows a star that is on lower meridian and against which the control position is westward. Now, in this particular situation, 
we also have the damping precision downwards and tilting upwards. Now tilting upwards can happen only on the east side. So upward tilting has to be controlled with downward precision which means that the settlement has to be slightly above the horizontal because damping precision is always directed towards the horizontal. And in this particular situation, this is the only quadrant where we can have this possibility that the forces, the vertical forces are opposite to each other and the east-west forces are also opposite to each other.